We are happy you could be with us again. I am joined by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group of Food and Wine Sommelier of the Year. The group includes Owen's Ordinary up in North Bethesda, and then down in Merrifield, you have uh, a red apron right next door is B-Side. Check that out. Greg, it is always good to you see too, you. What is on tap this week? So this week, we have a very special uh, classic German-style beer. It's right. from the Etaller. Uh, brewery, oh, yeah. um, been there. and it's called Curator. You been there? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Why don't you tell us about the beer? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, I have. I'm pretty yeah, sure. It's a, yeah, it's a really cool uh, monastic, monastery and brewery uh, in Bavaria near Munich. Um, they make very small amounts of delicious beer there, including this Curator, which is a strong, dark lager, lager called a Doppelbach, and it's a uh, Brewed to nine percent for the American market. Hello, nine percent. What do they? What do they brew it for the German it's market? A mere seven percent of the German yeah, market. Yeah, American. And so they're, they're, they're uh, imported by uh, a really great uh, importer uh, called Be United. Oh, that's good. And um, Be United works with their brewers oftentimes to kind of develop certain things that may work better for the American market. So I think they were they encourage them to add a little bit more strength back to the beer. Um, for the American market. I mean, uh, really delicious. You can't taste it. Yeah, no, exactly. It's very mellow, very smooth. That's what lagering will do. I mean, this is dark, it's strong, but it's, but it's clean, it's crisp on the palate. It's got all that kind of dark fruit character you might associate with like a Belgian style, strong dark ale, like a quadruple or something, you know, fig and cherry, oh, raisin, yeah. um, but then great malty, uh, bready, Richness and sweetness on the palate, uh, fruit cake, toast, caramel, um, amazing beer. Fruit cake, which is what really makes you want to try a beer. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who, do, who does that? Yeah, watch, watch. <laughs> no, no. The first thing I thought was raisin, which you said. Um, yeah, yeah, totally. What? It, it, I don't want you to get in trouble with any, you know, countries yeah. of many you visited. But I mean, did, does anyone do lagering better than the Germans? No. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean so the Czech Czech brewers make lots good, of great lagers yeah. too. But I think. Germans have, I mean, they, they, they make the greatest lagers in the world, especially because they just do so many different kinds, um, you know, uh, uh, different kinds of box, different strengths, um, really phenomenal. And, and this brewery makes a Dunkel that's, you know, five and a half percent alcohol that's just teeming with malt character um, and also uh, really delicious. Yeah, now we went here on our a trip to Germany. I, I have a glass, I think, so from the cool. brewery. It was very cool. Yeah. Um, and they've been brewing, so the monastery's yeah. been there since like the early 1300s. They've been brewing there since the 1600s. And, you know, these are Benedictine monks uh, who also, it should be known, they do brew, this, this beer is from the monastery brewery, very small, very hard to get. They brew some beer under contract at uh, Bitburger. Um, under the Benedictiner name. So you'll okay. see some of their beers there. But either way, all of that money that they generate from the beer making goes to self-sustaining uh, at the monastery. Uh, what is the craft beer scene like in Germany right now? Craft is, as we think about it, because yeah. I just got back from a great trip to Ireland and even, and it had been three years since I'd been there and it seems like it's growing by leaps and bounds there. Oh, yeah. And they're making some really good beer. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think the Germans were a little bit later to the party just because their um, traditions are so ingrained. Well, Reinheitsgebot, how do you get around Reinheitsgebot, I mean, right, yeah. yeah, well, just by getting around it. I mean, that's the thing, like, it, it, it's just whether it's enforced or not. But you're, to that point, I mean, lots of bigger breweries, lots of smaller breweries, the, the drinking culture is ingrained, so it was hard to break free. It's happening more and more now. Um, I think, particularly in the north, like around Berlin, we just did um, uh, a great collaboration beer at Blue Jacket with a, a newer German brewery called Schnee Euler. Uh, they actually concentrate exclusively on traditional Berliner Weisse, but they were, they were in town this last few days and they were telling us about the scene there. And it definitely seems like much more innovation experimentation is coming, but plenty more as well. What I love, and I think we've talked about this before, the hard thing for me when I go to a lot of these countries is, I get to drink lots of different innovative beers all the time in America. So when I get to Germany, you want to drink want the trad lagers. beers. Like, yeah, yeah, like, see, yeah, and it's funny, so I'll be visiting the, the, the uh, Augustina. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. That, yeah. that beer is incredible. Or like when I go to England, I'll meet up with friends and they can't wait to take me to like the new brewery that are making incredible like um, wildly fermented beers. And I, I like that too, sure. but I just want to go and drink Harvey's 
Sussex bitter on cask all day with that one beer. Like that's it. It's it's so funny how that works. But you want what you can't have. Boy, what I can think of some things. What would you pair this with? So this is another example of multi beers are just amazing with every kind of food you can think of. So um, one of the things you can do with this, even though it's 9%, is serve it with like a simple salad. It's gonna bring the nuttiness to the salad. Like, you know, if you have like arugula with blue cheese and walnuts, this is gonna work right there. Also, bready thinking, and we're in the summertime now, like a panzanella salad with high acid, balsamic, tomatoes, cheese, you know, crusty bread, beautiful. And then your classics like steak and lamb. And the other thing is, I think with Doppelbach, it works really well with like herbal preparation. So if you have like a roast pork loin that's heavily herbed, awesome. Or if you have like lamb with like a sprigs of fresh rosemary, really great with this. All right, Greg, thank you as always. Everyone, please always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week.